In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement list view pagination within your Flutter application. Our application is going to have the following functionality. We'll see a list view, which is going to show us the list of products. And when we reach the end of the products, it's going to show us a loading indicator, after which it's going to add the rest of the products from the API. And this will keep on going as long as we keep scrolling. And every time we load products, we're going to load them 15 at a time. So with this said, let's get into it. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to be doing is taking a look at all of the resources that we're going to be using within this tutorial, as well as the packages that we're going to be using. So firstly, to consume our API, we're going to be using the API of products that is provided to us by a website called dummyjson.com. And specifically, we're going to be hitting the HTTPS dummyjson.com endpoint slash products. And from here, we're going to be getting all of the products that we require. Besides this, we're also going to be using the DO package to actually perform our HTTP requests, as well as Flutter Spin Kit to actually show the loading indicator within our list view. So let's quickly add these to our project. I'm going to copy DO, come back to my Flutter project, and here what I'm going to be doing is pasting that under pubspec.yaml, like so. And once this is done, I am also going to do Flutter Spin Kit, come back, and then paste it in like so, and do command save. Once this is done, I'll let Flutter Puppets do its magic. And while that is happening, I'm going to copy this specific URL. As a side note, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as the link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it. Once I've copied this, what I'm going to be doing is coming back and you can use any kind of API testing application. I'm going to be using a client that's built within VS Code by actually installing a extension called Tender, but you can use Google Chrome as well. And what I'm going to be doing here is actually demonstrating to you guys what we're going to actually get as a response from the API. I'm going to show you an existing request where we actually have the actual endpoint that we're going to be sending the actual request to, and it has three query parameters, a limit, a skip parameter, as well as a select. So we'll leave select alone for this tutorial. All I want to tell you here is that for select, since we want to show the title, the price, the ID, as well as the thumbnail for the actual products within our list view, we're going to say that we're going to select title, price, and thumbnail from our API. And if I do send, we're going to see that we're going to get a response from our API where we get a JSON object which contains a product key where we have a list of products. And for each product, we have the following attributes, ID, title, price, and thumbnail. At the very end, we also get the total amount of products that are available in the API, which we're going to be using, as well as the limit of the products. So how many products we get in one request, which in this case is 10, as well as how many products do we skip before we grab the next 10 set of products. So if I set skip to zero, then this means that I want the first 10 products. Once I have the first 10 products, I want the next 10, then what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be setting skip to be 10 now. If I want the next 10, then it's going to be 20. So for some APIs, pagination is implemented in this way. For some other ones, you update the page number, but the logic remains the same in terms of coding it. So we're going to be using this. So now that you understand the logic of it, let's get into the coding part of things. So first things first, what I'm going to tell you guys is that I have a model file within my actual Flutter project, and I've created this for your convenience. And what this class basically does is that it allows us to model a product JSON object in the form of an actual Dart class. So this is the product class, and we have the four attributes here, or properties here for the class, which are ID, title, price, and thumbnail. And then the only function that you should actually be concerned with is the following, where we send some JSON to this function, this is a constructor, factory constructor method. And what it does is that it takes that JSON and then returns an instance of a product to us. And that's all you need to know. So if you want to get access to it, link to download the source code will be down in the description below. Once this is done, the product, the project is fairly simple. There's nothing that I've implemented. We're going to be using a stateful widget to actually implement the logic. So what I'll do now is that I'll start running my application on the simulator. And once it's running on the simulator, I'll resume the video. Welcome back, everybody. So now that the application is running, our home page is basically a stateful widget where we have a scaffold that just for now has an app bar. So now we're going to be starting adding some stuff to this. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that to my scaffold, I am going to add the body property. And then I'm going to set the body to be a size box, which is going to have a height, which is going to be the height of the screen like so. And then I'm going to, after this, add a child for the sized box like so. The child for this size box is going to be a list view. And specifically, we're going to be using the builder function on the list view. We're going to set the item builder function to be 
taking in two parameters, which are context and index. And then I'm going to do command save, make sure we don't get any errors. Once this is done, I'm also going to set the item count for the list view builder. So the item count here is going to correspond to the amount of products that we want to show within our list view. So for that, I'll come to the top of my class and here I'll say that I'll create a list of products. I'm going to call them products like so, and to start off, I'll set that to be an empty list. Then here, I'm gonna say that our list views item count is going to be products.length, like so, and do command save. Once this is done, since every time I want to get notified when we reach the end of our list, what I am going to be doing is on my list view.builder, I'm going to be firstly setting the physics to be always scrollable physics, like so. And then after this, I'm going to say shrink wrap is going to be false. And then after this, I'm going to add the actual controller. And the controller is going to be a scroll controller. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the top of my class. And here I'm going to create a final variable. I'm going to call this scroll controller. And I'm going to say this is going to be called scroll controller. And it's going to be set to a instance of scroll controller like so. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the scroll controller and I'll set it here like so and do command save. I'll hot reload my application and restart it and make sure that nothing is broken. Once this is done, I'm going to implement the init state function within my home page state controller. And here what I'm going to be doing is that after the superclasses init state function is called, I'm going to say that hey scroll controller add a listener and the listener is going to do the following things. But now I'm not going to define an anonymous function here. What I'll do is that I'll remove this and I'll actually come to the bottom of my class. And here I'm going to create a new function which will return void. I'm going to call this load more data like so. And for now, what I'll do is I'll leave this empty. And then I'll take this function callback and I'll add this here like so and do command save. And that's pretty much all we're going to be doing for now. We'll come back to the scroll logic later on. The first thing that we have to do is that we need to get our initial set of products, which are 10 or 15, how many we want. So to do that, what I'll do is that I will define a new function within my class at the bottom of it, which will return a future void. It's going to be called get products like so. And it's going to be a asynchronous function. Then I'm going to add a try catch block so that it's easy for me to debug my code. And within catch, I'm just going to print an error in the case we get any. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is actually performing the HTTP request to actually get the information from the dummyjson.com API. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is firstly, I'm going to be defining an instance of Dio, which we're going to be using to perform these HTTP requests. So come to the top of my class, I'll say that I'll create a new variable type do called do and set that to a new instance of do like so. Then I will actually import this package in and then do command save. Then I'll come to the bottom again within the try block. I'm going to say that now I'm going to create a variable which is going to store our response. So I'm going to say final response is going to be equal to await do.get and we're going to add the following stuff. Firstly, I'm going to call the following API endpoint like so. And since I want to add pagination to this, I'm going to add some query parameters. I want to get 15 products every time I do a call. So I'm going to do 15. And then I also need to keep a track of how many products I actually have so that I can skip those products and get the next 15. So I'm going to set the skip property to be something. Well, the skip property is just going to be in this case, how many products we have within our products list. So if we have, for example, 10 products within our products list, then products length is going to be 10. So we're going to skip the 10 or 15, and then we're going to next 15. And when it's empty, then it's going to be zero. So all I'm going to do is that I'm going to add products.length here, like so, by interpolating it within the string. And once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is adding the select clause so that we can select the title price and thumbnail and actually tell the API that we want these things for each of the products we get to command save. And that's pretty much it. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be creating another variable. And this is going to be a list. It's going to be called data. And I'm going to get this from response.data and then specifically the products key. So if you remember, we get a response where we have a key products. So I'm going to access that and save that within our data. So if I do this, I can now add a print statement here to print data. Then I can do get products. I can go to the very top 
of my init state and I can add this here like so and do command save. Once I do this and I reload my application and I actually open up the term debug console, you're going to see that we get an output in our console which is showing us all of these products. So now that I have these products in the form of actual objects or maps in this case, what I want to do is convert that into a product instance and then create a list of products. So to do that, it's going to be fairly simple. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new list of product. I'm going to call this new products. I'm going to set this equal to data dot map. And then here, what I'm going to do is that for each of the products, I'm going to do product dot from JSON, pass that product P to it. And then that's pretty much it. And at the end, I'll make this a list and do command save. So once this is done, I can do print new products once again and reload hot restart. And as you can see, now we get a output on our debug console where we can see that we get a list of instance of products. So it's successfully taking these maps in, converting them to instance of products. And this is what it's basically doing here. So once this is done, that's pretty much all we have to do. So now I'm going to call set state. And within set states, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do products.addAll. And then I'm going to add the new products to it like so to command save. So once this is done, now that we're actually loading the products up, let's show them within our list view. So to do that, it's going to be very simple. Within my item builder for my actual list view, I'm going to say that I'm going to return a list tile like so. And then before I return the list tile, I'm actually going to actually access the product that we're going to be showing. So to do that, I'll create a new variable called product, and I'll set that to be the products list at the product at the specific index. Once this is done, I'm going to add the leading property to the list tile, and I'm going to set that to be the products ID. And once this is done, I'm going to go to the next step, and I'm going to set the title like so. And now if I hot reload my application, restart it, as you can see, we're seeing the products. Then I'm going to set the subtitle to be the following, which is just the actual product price, as you can see. And finally, since this is more involved, I'm going to set the trailing to be an image widget, where the image is going to be network image. And it's going to be the product that we get and then the thumbnail, like so. And then once this is done, we are seeing the actual image. So now what I'm going to be doing is actually adding a fixed width to the image just to make everything look nice. And then after this, I'm going to set the box fit for this to be boxfit.cover like so. And that's pretty much all we had to do. So now we're seeing all of the products, but we're not getting more products. Once we reach the end of the list, nothing's happening. So let's implement the pagination logic. So to implement the pagination logic, the first thing that we have to do is figure out once we've reached the end of our actual list. So if you remember, we had added an actual listener using the scroll controller, which is going to notify us of events that happen on the list view. So what I'm going to be doing within this actual function callback, which is load more data, is that I'm going to say if, and then here is where we're going to be setting some conditions. And here we're going to say if the scroll controller dot position dot pixels is equal to scroll controller dot position dot max scroll extent like so then we've reached the end of our actual list and we should get more products so i'm going to call get products here but there is still a flaw within this code and that is that every time we reach the end of our list we'll keep calling this load more data and what's going to happen is that we're going to keep getting products, but there's going to come a point when our API is not going to be able to return us any more products because we've reached the end of our list. So somehow we need to keep a track of that as well. So for that, what I'll do is that firstly, I'll go to the very top of my class. And here I'm going to create a new integer, which is going to be called total products. And for now, I'll set that to be a very big value. Let's just say 1000. Then when we do get products, we are not only going to get the products returned to us, but at the very end, we're also going to get a total key given to us, which will indicate to us how many total products the API has. So in set state, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set the total products here to be equal to that value, which is going to be response data and specifically the total like so. 
and do command save. So now on the initial load here, we're going to go through and we're going to set the total products to be the following like so. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So now we're keeping track of the total products. So every time we reach the end of our list, what I'm going to be doing now is in load more data. I've now established that I've reached the end of my list. One more thing that I want to make sure is that the products that we have, the length of that is less than the total products that are actually available to us through our API. So if this condition fails, then we won't load more data. Why? Because we reached the end of our list. Yes. But we also don't have any more products to show. So do this and this way that logic will be fixed. And if we actually reach the end of how many products we can show, we won't do any more network requests. So now it should work if I do command save. So now what I'll do is that I'll restart my application and you're going to see that we get the first 15 products. I scroll, we add more, then we reach the end, then we add more, then we reach the end and we keep scrolling till we reach the end at a hundred. So everything's working as intended and then we're not loading anything anymore. So the last thing that we want to do is implement some kind of a loading indicator at the bottom of our list view to kind of signal to the user that, hey, we're loading some more results. So let's do that. For that, we need to keep track of if we're loading stuff. So for that, what I'll do is that I will create a Boolean and I'm going to call this is loading and I'm going to set that to false to start with. Then what I'll do is every time we start getting products, I'm going to call set state and I'm going to set is loading to true. And then every time we've done everything and we call set state again, I'm going to set is loading to false. So we're now keeping a track of when we're loading stuff and when we're not loading stuff. So now all we have to do is determine when to show the loading indicator. So there are many ways you can do this. You can use a stack and then you can put a loading indicator on top of your list and put it alignment dot bottom center. There's a lot of ways you can do it. But one way you could do it is within the list view dot builder, within the item builder, we can determine if we're building the last item within our list. And if we are, then we can also show a loading indicator with the last item. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is firstly, I'm going to be wrapping this list tile with a widget. And this time we're going to be putting this within a column. A column is going to have multiple children. So we need to change the child to a children property now and add the list tile within a list like so. And this should pretty much fix the issue for us. And nothing's broken, so we can proceed. And then what I can do is that within the children's list, I'm always going to have the list tile. But what I can do after the list tile is that if it's the last item, then I can optionally add something. So if the index is equal to products.length, so if it's the last index, then I want to show the loading indicator. And we are going to do products length minus one because in index are zero based and this is going to return us the length. So I have to subtract one from it. So I subtract one from it. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm also going to say that is loading is true. So if this is the case, then I'm going to basically return the following. I'll return a padding widget. The padding widget is going to have padding, which is going to be edge and sets dot all. And I'll set this to be 10.0. Then once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is adding a child. The child is going to be a spin kit, three bones, and you can use many different things. Flutter spin kit is an awesome package. And then here I'm going to do color, colors dot purple, like so. And then the size here can be 40 to command save. And that's pretty much all we had to do. So now every time we get products, we set is loading to true. And then at the end we set is loading to false. So if I restart my application, you can see that we load the first 10 products. Then when I reach the end, it shows me the purple loading indicator. And then if I keep going down, it keeps showing me that it's loading more stuff. And when we reach the end, there's nothing else to show. So it stops loading any more data. So that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed the tutorial, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.